Welcome to the Biotechnology Lecture Series. This is the first lecture on the cell biology. In this course, we will cover the following topics. And in this lecture, we will discuss introduction of cell, cell theory, its historical perspective, chemical constituents, and its functions. Cells are the primary building blocks of life. They come in all shapes and sizes. Some cells are so small and can only be observed under a microscope, but some are large enough to be held, like eggs. The smallest cell is the Mycoplasma galliceptacum, a disease causing bacteria in birds. It can be as small as 0.3 nanometers. And the largest cell is the ostrich's egg, which can reach up to 6 inches in diameter. While we discuss these topics, let's not forget to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you won't miss any upcoming lectures. Here are some examples of cells. Bacteria, red blood cells, nerve cell, columnar epithelial cells, skeletal muscle cell, fat cell, smooth muscle cell, skin cells, and algae. Cell theory is a fundamental principle in biology that describes the basic structural and functional unit of all living organisms, the cell. It states three main ideas. Number one, all living organisms are composed of one or more cells. Number two, the cell is the basic unit of structure, function, and organization in organisms. And number three, cells arise from pre-existing cells through cellular division. The inception of cell theory can be traced back to significant contributions made by several pioneering scientists. In 1665, Robert Hooke became the first person to observe cells under a microscope using a thin slice of cork. He termed the structures he observed as cells, thus initiating the foundational concept of cell theory. Subsequently, in 1674, Anton van Leeuwenhoek expanded the understanding of cells by utilizing a simple microscope to observe single-celled microorganisms. Building upon these observations, in 1838, Matthias Schleiden proposed that all plants are comprised of cells. This was followed by Theodor Schwann's 1839 proposition, which extended the idea to animals, suggesting that all animals are also composed of cells. Finally, in 1855, Rudolf Virchow completed the cell theory by proposing that cells only originate from pre-existing cells. These collective contributions form the fundamental principles of cell theory, revolutionizing the field of biology and providing the basis for our understanding of life at its most basic level, the cell. There are several chemical constituents of the cell, like water, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, lipids, proteins, vitamins, minerals, ions, and organelles. Water acts as a universal solvent, participates in chemical reactions, and helps in the transport of nutrients and waste products. And carbohydrates provide energy for cellular activities, structural support, and cellular recognition. Lipids serve for energy storage, membrane structure, insulation, and signaling. On the other hand, proteins function as enzymes, structural support, molecule transport, immune responses, and cellular signaling. Nucleic acids store and transmit genetic information and facilitate protein synthesis. On the other hand, vitamins and minerals are essential for various cellular processes, acting as cofactors and catalysts in reactions. Ions regulate cellular activities, maintain osmotic balance, and participate in signaling. And organelles are specialized structures within cells with distinct functions, like mitochondria for energy production, the nucleus for genetic control, and the endoplasmic reticulum for protein synthesis. Cell theory is crucial for understanding the basic structural and functional unit of life, allowing for biological research and advancements. It laid the foundation for modern biology and other scientific disciplines, influencing fields like genetics, microbiology, 
medicine, and biotechnology. Understanding cell theory is essential in the study of diseases, development of drugs, genetic engineering, and various medical and scientific innovations. That's all from this lecture. See you in the next video for lecture number two.